Hello friends, this video on light shadows and reflection part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly look at some of the questions. Question number one, rearrange the boxes given below to make a sentence that helps us understand opaque objects. So here you have different uh, parts of, you know, uh, words. So as you can see here, so one thing that is very clearly visible is opaque. So this is opaque. This is objects. So this is this makes opaque, this makes objects. And then you have M left out here. Here you have AKE. So this M and this AKE. These will combine together to form make. And then you have shad o's so these will combine together to form shadows so what you can write you can say opaque objects make shadows so that's a meaningful sentence question number two classify the objects or materials given below as opaque transparent or translucent and luminous or non luminous so what is opaque that object which doesn't allow light to pass through it so looking at this picture which object do you think would be opaque the rock pieces yes it would be opaque it doesn't allow light to pass through it you talk about this wooden block again this would also be opaque you talk about a mirror this that is also opaque that is why all the light gets reflected and image formation happens you talk about a cd that also is opaque what else is opaque you talk about this aluminium sheet this is also opaque so all of these are opaque you talk about transparent transparent means that object which allows light to completely pass through it so if you look at water water is transparent because it you know you can see other objects through water when you talk about air air is again transparent because through air you can see other objects had you not been able to see through air in that case you would have not been able to see anything around yourself you talk about a polythene sheet. So this is a polythene sheet. So when you look at a polythene sheet, most of them appear very clean and transparent. So that is also going to be a transparent object. Let's look at few more objects as you can see here. So here again, uh, if you look at it, you have the wall. So the wall appears to be opaque because it doesn't allow light to pass through it. You think of the umbrella. Umbrella again is opaque because it doesn't allow light to pass through it completely. You talk about uh, a piece of say red hot iron. So what happens to red hot iron? It is able to produce its own light. That, that's when it becomes red hot. It, it is able to produce its own light. So basically this red hot iron would be a luminous object because it has its own light. You talk about a sheet of plain glass like this. So that is going to be transparent because it allows light to pass through it. You talk about fog. What happens when there, it, it's a foggy morning? Is it that you are not able to see anything through it? Not really. You are able to see things but everything appears hazy. That's because fog is translucent. It is neither transparent nor opaque. Similarly, when you talk about smoke, smoke is also translucent because you are able to see other objects through smoke but not very clearly. So you get an unclear or hazy uh, display. So that's why it is translucent. You talk about a lighted fluorescent tube. So this is again an object which is able to produce its own light. So it is a luminous object. A few more objects here where you have a sheet of carbon paper. What kind of object would it be? It is definitely an opaque object because light cannot pass through it. Looking at the flame of the gas burner. So this flame of the gas burner is obviously 
luminous because it is able to produce its own light. When you talk about something like the wire mesh, you look at these wire mesh, what are they? They are transparent because you know through them you are able to see the objects on the other side and at the same time these are non-luminous, they do not produce their any light of their own. You talk about a kerosene stove, so the kerosene stove again is uh, a luminous object because it is able to produce its own light. You talk about the sun, it is luminous object, it has its own light but when you talk about the moon, it is non-luminous object because it reflects the light that it receives from the sun. So it is an illuminated object or non-luminous object. You think of a firefly, firefly is able to produce its own light so it is luminous object. Think of uh, uh, a torch. So to lighted torch also produces its own light. So it is again uh, a luminous object. You think of the cellophane paper. So the cellophane papers are transparent objects but they are non-luminous because they do not produce any light of their own. You think of cardboard sheet. So the cardboard sheet, they are opaque objects and of course they are non-luminous because they do not have any light of their own. So that's how you can classify the objects that you see around yourself into uh, opaque, transparent or translucent as well as into luminous and non-luminous objects. Question number three. Can you think of creating a shape that would give a circular shadow if held in one way and a rectangular shadow if held in another way. So let's think of the example of a cylinder. So if you look at a cylinder, you have a circular face at one end and you have this rectangular face on the other. So if light falls on this face of the cylinder, the shadow that is formed is rectangular because this face of the cylinder doesn't allow light to pass through it. So you get a rectangular shadow here. But if you hold the same cylinder in this fashion such that the circular part of the cylinder is in this direction and the light is falling on the circular part of the cylinder. So in that case since this portion of the cylinder is blocking light, so this portion will remain dark and that's how a circular shadow will be formed. So you can actually look at various objects which give different shapes of shadows because of the way light falls on them. Question number four. In a completely dark room, if you hold up a mirror in front of you, will you see a reflection of yourself in the mirror? Of course not because light is very much needed for reflection to take place. So if there is no light, what will happen? No light will actually fall on the mirror. So there will be no bouncing back of light. So there will be no image formation and therefore we will not see our reflection in the mirror. So light is a must for reflection to take place. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on light, shadows and reflection would have helped you. So just try looking out at various objects around you and start classifying them as transparent, translucent, luminous, non-luminous. Start looking out for objects or surfaces which produce images and you know that will make you feel happy. You will know that whatever you are reading in your textbooks is something which you experience around yourself and that's how you will enjoy learning science. So uh, I hope this lesson would have helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.